Longer processing times are common for autistic people. But did you know that many of us have a defined difference in the way that we communicate? A praxy of speech or AOS is expressed as a trouble saying what you want to say correctly and consistently. It's all down to the way that we process, plan out speech patterns, and coordinate our mouths to produce it. Today we're going to be talking about speech apraxia, which is something that's been making its rounds through the autistic community, as something that's really come about from some research that they did with some children. They found that a large proportion of autistic children that they, they taught or they looked at or they studied had some kind of speech apraxia. And going off the fact that a lot of autistic people, a lot of autistic children grow up to be autistic adults, it makes sense that some of us will have some apraxia for the rest of our lives, or at least for a large proportion of our life. So you may be thinking, what, what the absolute hell is speech apraxia? Why are you talking about this? Why is it interesting? It is actually a really, really cool concept because it really explains a lot of the ways that I fumble up when communicating with other people. Or actually, some of the, the difficulties that I have sometimes with trying to say certain words and then not being able to say them again or saying stuff and then highlighting the bits that I'm not supposed to with my voice. Basically, the, the way that it expresses in a lot of people is inconsistencies in error. In, oh my god. See, so there we go. Inconsistent errors in speech. You may say a complex word right once, and then you try to replicate it again, and you really struggle. You, know, like you might want to say discombobulation, but then dis discombobulation, you know, that, that kind of experience, that's what, it, what, that's what it sounds like. It can also be groping for sounds, and now that, that might sound a little bit spicy, a little bit nearer spicy, but um, <laughs> it basically means that you might say something multiple times before saying it right. Another example of it would be to do with prosody. I don't know if I'm saying prosody right, but it's basically the the rhythm and inflections that you use to emphasize the meaning in what you're saying. You might say that I want to emphasize the meaning in my speech because I want you to make sure that the, the emphasizing is very, very strong. So that's the kind of the core message that I'm trying to speak, trying to say. But if I say the rhythm or inflections that emphasize the meaning of speech are very important. And you kind of, although I'm saying the same words, well, I, did, I didn't say the same words, but the meaning of it changes because I'm highlighting a certain word. That's the kind of experience that I have quite a lot. So things like atypical expressions of rhythm, tone, and, and stress. Speech rhythm is the arrangement of spoken words alternating stressed and non-stressed elements. Rhythm might be, so I was going to the shops, and then I got on the bus, and then I went home and I found my wife in bed with another man. <laughs> yeah, so you, you could say that. Um, so that's kind of a good, a good example of rhythm, but you might say, so I got home and then I went on the bus and then I sort of, I, well, I, I took a little bit of a, a detour and then I came back and then I found my, my wife in, in bed with another man. You know, it doesn't really have the same sort of impact when you say it, because you don't really have that rhythm to it. It could also be something like tone. Tone of voice is a non-verbal aspect of speaking. Tone is intonation, or is sometimes called an inflection. You know, like the inflections at the end of your speech to signal that you're asking a question. In phonics, stress is the degree of emphasis given as given to a sound or syllable in speech. Rhythm or inflections is meant to emphasize the meaning of speech rather than rhythm or inflections that emphasize the meaning in speech. I, I gave the example on my Instagram. I tried my best to try and give a good example, but it's it's really hard to do it when you're not actually speaking. So I, I gave people a, a statement like, the car is red as sort of an example of what, of what you might say in order to sort of emphasize what you're trying to get across. But for me, it could turn into the car is of a, 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 re, a red color and it's a, a car that is red. Yes, that's the, that's the example that I gave. It's a little bit of an exaggeration, but I felt like I had to exaggerate it because trying to ex express the way that you say things 
with words other than using a really complex way of sort of setting things out and using punctuation and and you know even then like people may not understand so it's 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 easier for me to explain it with my actual voice. So I guess what I want to ask you is, have you ever experienced, see, happen again, ever, ever, ever experienced, ever experienced speech apraxia? Is it something that you weren't aware of? Aware of? <laughs> oh my God. Ah. Oh. Is it something that you weren't aware of before coming across this video or, or you've recently come across it and you've started to kind of look back on things that you say or, or, you know, whenever you have a conversation with somebody and you slip up and you, you think, oh, my brain must be off. I was like, no, it's probably some form of speech apraxia, which I guess is similar, but it's a very interesting concept and it definitely opened my eyes to the way that I communicate with people and some of the things that, you know, as, as autistic people with speech apraxia may differ um, in terms of our communication ability in terms of our speech socializing so i hope you have very much enjoyed this remember to like your subby uh follow the podcast put lots of cool cool episodes coming out in season two there's a few already follow the instagrams they'll be either side of the uh, it's pro probably here no is it is it there tom who knows anyway i hope you're doing well and uh i'll see you in another episode of the thomas henley channel <laughs> Thomas Henley channel. Oh my god. Welcome back to the Thomas Henley channel. It's really weird because I usually say the name of my channel, but my, my name is Thomas Henley, so it's, it's I'm saying my name. Hmm. Well, I'll have to get back to you on that one. Take care.